Praise the Lord. Good, great congregation. Praise the Lord. You know, it's wonderful to preach to people like you. When I preach to people like you, I preach and preach and preach. And when I should get tired, I don't get tired. You are wonderful people. Clap for yourself. Praise the Lord. Your life is going to be great. And the power of the Lord, the Lord has deposited in your life during this Congress. That power will never fade off in Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, your people, your servants, your ministers. Thank you, Lord, because of the great thing you are expecting through them. And from them, Lord, we pray that they will not disappoint you in Jesus' name. You have done great things for us, and therefore we are rejoicing. You are doing great things through the life of every brother, every sister. And our joys will know no bounds in Jesus' name. For every brother, every sister here, every minister of the gospel, I'm praying, oh Lord, you will inject your power once again, divine energy once again, into the life of everyone in Jesus' name. They will not be weary. They will not faint. They will not be tired. They will not turn back from the way. And Lord, they will walk till the very end in Jesus' name. Confirm your mighty power in their lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're coming to the last uh, session of Faith Clinic in our Congress. Uh, we started the other day and see, we've come to the conclusion now almost. There's nothing that has a beginning that doesn't have an end. Even problems in life, there is no problem in life that has a beginning that doesn't have any end. Therefore, don't ever give up because a spiritual, supernatural breakthrough is waiting for you in Jesus' name. When you are young, you used to put your doors, you push your doors open. And you kick it if it doesn't get open. And you say, what's happening to this door? But you know, when you become much, much older, you know how you do it? The angels come to you. And then they tap you. And you wake up. An angel tells you, put on your sandals. And you put on your sandals. And then you are following the angel. And when you get to that iron door, it, up, it opens on its own. And then you go to the next, it opens on its own. And then he then leads you right into the field. And he says, the power is there, the freedom is there, the liberty is there. Go ahead and do exploits for God. That's what the angel did to Peter. He was even sleeping. And he was expecting execution and death. But you will not be executed. And you will not die. No Herod will catch you in Jesus' name. Can I just remind you that in the first uh, few verses of Exodus 2 upon, in the first few verses of, uh, of uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 12, the death uh, sentence was hanging on the head of Peter. And it was Herod that wanted to effect that. By the time you come to the end of that chapter, the death sentence had gone away from the minister. And he had gone to the enemy of the minister. And eventually he died and worms ate him up. All the cause has gone away from your head. And all the sentence of the enemy is gone away from your head. And you, if you have been sleeping and you have been afraid, maybe, maybe, maybe something negative, there is no maybe anymore. The hand of the Lord is upon your life. And as the angel wakes you up, and then you get up, then you dress up, and you are going into the field once again. All the iron doors before you, they'll be opening of their own accord. There is great, great victory awaiting you. That's why we come this morning to spiritual breakthrough. Everybody say spiritual supernatural breakthrough. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1. And in Joshua chapter 1, we're looking at verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not leave, I will not fail thee, I will not forsake thee. The Lord is telling you that as we're going tomorrow, that there is no man, no enemy that will be able to stand before you, no problem will be able to stand before you, not only this month, not only this year, all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, I will not forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage for unto these people. Thou shalt divide the land for an inheritance which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand 
unto the Lord that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest whithersoever thou goest whithersoever thou goest any region you are sent to you will prosper any state you are sent to you will prosper any nation you are sent to you will prosper any area of the work you are sent to you will prosper in Jesus name breakthrough in life and in ministry is God's promise for you and it's God's provision for you because you are in Christ and to every other servant of God when all hindrances and roadblocks and stumbling blocks are taken out of the way then we go through those open doors to the blessings of life and the fruitfulness in ministry that indeed is our supernatural breakthrough and it has started already I divide the message to three parts number one the book of God's message that's what you hold in your hand and you go with that to the battlefield and you are going to overcome number two the boldness of godly messengers be courageous there's no enemy that can bring you down be bold and courageous the Lord is on your side number three the breakthrough of guided ministers guided ministers when the lord begins to guide you and he says go this way and go that way do it this way say this way you are going to have a breakthrough point number one the book of god's message we're told in joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the lord shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success the lord is telling us the the secret of victory and the secret of conquering and the secret of having the breakthrough this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth the promises in the book should not depart out of your mouth. The warning in the book should not depart out of your mouth. The things that are written concerning you in this book should not depart out of your mouth. Don't repeat the devil's sentences or the devil's opinions or the devil's statements about you about your wife about your children about the church and the devil's insinuations about the workers in the church and the devil's ideas and the devil's accusation about any section of the work and about any member of the church if you want to think on negative things the devil will fill your mind with negative things negative things about yourself i cannot i cannot i cannot if you want to give the devil a chance it will give you negative ideas about your wife she is not she is not she is not i she doesn't befit me why is she like this i am sharp she is dull i am great she is small i am a dynamic and she is an idol if you want to give in to the devil the devil is going to give you negative things about the members of the church and about the sections of the church this one doesn't like me the look of this one is not a towards me and this one never does well and this one will never cooperate and this one will never succeed this one is a thorn in my flesh if you want to give in to the devil the devil is going to fill your mind with the negative thoughts about the language church you see this language church why did they come up in fact they are going to bring confusion this is going to happen if you want to give the devil a chance it's going to fill your mind with with negative things about your region this region they told me I, I think i'm the number five now of the region of assets that have been coming the first one they sent him away the second one they wrote petition and the third one uh, they, they accused him of stealing money and the other one uh, when when the man was about to have a pension then they, they, they took him away and they put me here why did they put me in a place like this if you are giving into the devil it's going to give you negative things about the whole church what are they doing in the headquarters when we send our report but when does the thing come back and all these things they are saying it is all theory it is this. but the lord is telling you watch that away from your mind today and you will succeed i said you will succeed love your love the lord and love the ministry the lord has given you and then the promises in the book of the word of god that i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and i will succeed he will never leave me he will never forsake me because he has assured me that he is my help he is my supporter everlasting arms are under me and he says no man shall be able to stand before me no i will not die but i will live i will declare the works 
of the Lord, you will know and you will believe that all the things reaching concerning you, that they are true and they are going to be fulfilled. And you will not say, I am a grasshopper, I am a giant in the spirit. I am mighty in my mind. My inner mind has been renewed. I can do everything the Lord has called me to do. This book of the Lord then shall not depart out of thy mouth. The promises and the warnings and of course the commandments. Love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye will love one another. And when you have that word in you. All the time the commandments are in your heart. And the prophecies are in your heart. It's coming again. And it's said occupy until i come this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous where are the prosperous people you are there god will confirm it in jesus name we'll hear some spectacular things that god is doing through you my dear sister my dear brother and all these uh, ministers you yourselves uh, when you give those testimonies you'll be surprised is it me it's not you alone it's christ walking in you it's the power of the holy spirit walking in you and we're going to hear those stories of success and prosperity in jesus name and then shall thou have good success you will have it it depends on this book you have the book in your heart you have the book in your mind you have the book in your hand you have the book in your mouth you have the book on your lips and when you keep to that book success must be yours in in, a, in someone i'm reading from verse one blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor seated in the seat of discomfort but his delight is in the law of the lord in his law does he meditate day and night in his law does he meditate day and night in his law does he meditate day and night when he says in his law it's actually using that word law for the whole book for everything that was available at that time you pick the book of the law you pick the word of god you pick your bible and you meditate i'm telling you it takes some effort it takes some effort and uh, what i mean is uh, for example here we are the congress and we have had quite a lot and the lord has challenged us and uh, you know we, we were preached for how many hours and hours and hours and hours we have been preaching but if uh, we came out of the hall for example either morning or afternoon somebody met you Oh, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been wanting to speak to you. Uh, do you know that? Uh, are you Brazilian? So yes, I am. Are you from this particular region? Yes, I am. Please come here. Be very, very careful. Uh, you know, since we have been in this uh, meeting over here, I uh, have uh, met some people, and uh, you know, I, I even found them. They were gathering together, about three of them, and they talked about you. In fact, I got near. When I got near, they said, oh, "Come here, come here. Uh, you need to hear this." And the way they slashed you and criticized you and caught you and condemned you. In fact, that place is a dangerous place, oh. And you are sitting on gunpowder. If you don't know, be very, very careful. When you get over there, I just try to help you. You are hurting him. You are not helping him. You are destroying him. You are not developing him. You are giving him negative information. And then uh, all those things might not even be true. And then you put your own addition to it. You colored it so that it will be sweet. And then you are poisoning his mind. And now everything we heard from Monday night since we came until the very last uh, day. He will not be able to meditate on them. The things that you shared with him and the things that you told him for just those five minutes finished that's all he'll be thinking about then he will sit in the congregation there while the choir is singing he's saying eh? so it is true that i'm sitting on gunpowder that all these people i give my life to all this i'm caring for them i'm doing this is it so who is the pe by the way this person did not even tell me who the people are and you are thinking is it james is it jacob is it stephen is it josephine is it mary is this so and so okay what happened last week before we came to the congress maybe that's the reason because i was saying if you don't have money for congress you will not go and that's what they told us is it because of, is it because at the retreat i didn't give so and so message is that the reason why in your mind in your heart all you'll be meditating on while choir is singing while preacher is preaching while prayer warriors are praying while anything is going on while they are making announcement you'll be meditating on those things they told you it takes an effort 
for you to go back to the book and say, what am I talking about? Who are the people saying that? I'm not going to feel condemned because two, three people are saying rubbish that they don't know. What does Jesus say about me? What does the Holy Spirit say about me? What does the Father say about me? What do the angels know about me? My own conscience, my own heart. What do I know about myself? The combination of Almighty God the Father and then Jesus Christ the Son and then the Holy Spirit and the angels and then my own conscience all combining together and telling me you're on the right path and telling me you're doing the right thing and telling me that I am happy with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. The testimony of the almighty God and of my conscience combining together is greater than all the opinions of five people somewhere that do, they don't know my heart they don't know your heart they don't know the reason why you did what you did therefore you'll not feel condemned you will meditate not on their gossip you will meditate not on their insinuation. You will meditate not on the uh, destructive thoughts and the negative things you are telling yourself. But it's delight. It's in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate day and night. What will happen to him? It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I'm talking about you. I said I'm talking about you. You will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You will prosper. I said you will prosper in Jeremiah chapter 1 Jeremiah chapter 1 the Lord called Jeremiah when the Lord called Jeremiah he was still feeling inadequate and when the Lord called you that's the way you were feeling you were feeling inadequate can I do this can I succeed of course the Lord did not make a mistake has the Lord ever made any mistake I said as the Lord ever made any mistake why is it on your part that the first time he will make mistake never in Jeremiah chapter 1 reading from verse 9 the Lord then the Lord put forth a son and touched my mouth and the Lord said unto me behold I have put my words in thy mouth is the word in your mouth see i have this this set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build god will make you a builder and to plant god will make you a planter moreover the word of the lord came unto me saying jeremiah what seest thou that's a secret what seest thou that's a secret the Israelites saw grasshoppers. What seest thou? And when David, when David came, and all the other people, they saw giants. But then David did not see a giant. David saw an uncircumcised dog. And then he took the sling in his hand. What seest thou? Peter saw the turbulent sea. He began to sing. What seest thou? It is what you see that will give you power. It is what you see that will give you authority. It is what you see that will give you confidence. It is what you see that will give you the prosperity and the success in ministry. It is what you see that will give you the joy, the joy of ministry. What seest thou? And then he said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, thou hast well seen. If the Lord asks you the question, what seest thou? I see a child of God. I see the mighty Christ that lives in me. I see that the one in me is greater than the one in the world. I see everything you have told me to do, I will do. I see all those Jericho walls and Jericho windows and Jericho doors. I see all of them broken down. What do you see? I see the people of God who are following after me. I see them victorious and I see us marching in and marching into the land of promise. What do you see? I see the sun staying when I say I command that sun stay. What do you see? I see the most standing there in, the, in that place until i finish the battle what do you see i see that i'm going to live long and i'm going to divide the land to the children of israel what do you see i see that i'm not going to die young i see that i'm going to finish the work the lord has given unto me what do you see i see that no enemy shall be able to stand before me it is what you see that will give you the victory and it is what you see that will give you the power thou art seen well for i will hasten my watch to perform it the word of god will be hasting in your life it will be performed in jesus name point number two the boldness of godly messengers the boldness of godly messengers in second timothy chapter one second timothy chapter one we're reading from verse six 
and reading from verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 6. Here in the word of the Lord, the Lord is assuring us what we have and what we shouldn't have. What we have and what we shouldn't have. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee. Stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. It says, you stir up, you stir up the gift of God which is in thee. Paul the apostle said it's in thee already you know sometimes it takes you for it takes for you for somebody else to tell you <clears throat> that this is what you have and because this is what you sometimes you don't know sometimes you don't know and I thank God for the people that God has sent to my life and to be an encouragement to me it was um, you know many many years ago and, and and this person was just you know in the scripture union but I respected him a lot and anytime I sat and he was preaching, I'd be looking at him, I'll be saying, Oh God, if you can help me to just teach like this man. And I, I never told him, never told him. Even till this time, I never told him. And uh, you know, he'll stand there, he'll take the Bible, and then he, he happened to be using Amplified Bible too. He'll take the King James Version of the Bible, and then he will read. And then to uh, emphasize his point, he'll bring in the Amplified Bible and uh, you know i i just felt that just to preach like this man this is enough i didn't know i had any teaching gift at that time and then he gave me a message and when he gave me the message he gave me the message the man god uses you know the way god arranges things in your life you'll be surprised and when he gave me that message the man god uses i said am i going to preach a thing like this well, in the presence of this person and when I finished, I was sure that he was going to tell me you should have done it this way, done it this way, done it. Because that man was a great, talented teacher of the word of God. And then he was sitting out there. There were not too many, like, you know, we're here now. Just a little group of people. And then I gave it to them, the man God uses. And then when, he, when I finished, he called me apart inside his office. He said, my brother, God has raised you up to be a teacher and uh, you know i just accepted i said thank you very much he didn't he didn't come in. he just said god has raised you up to be a teacher and deeper life had not started and i had not you know even in the church i was going then i i didn't have the courage to even stand up and uh, the, the the church i was going to when the members of the choir here when they come up i mean just one group when they come up that's like uh, if you multiply them by two that will be like the congregation at that time even with those few people the confidence and the courage to stand up and give a testimony in their midst i couldn't do that i was so shy and i was so timid and i was so you know reserved and introvert i couldn't talk to them but when that uh, brother told me god has raised you up to be a teacher then he said it convincingly i knew i had something within me sometimes it will take a paul to tell a timothy that the gift is within you and i thank god the gift is within you i said it is within you then he said for god has not given us the spirit of fear and if you have fear the lord has not given it to you and then what you'll do is you'll say lord everything you have not given me everything which is not coming from you but in my life not seen not seen just being timid just being fearful just being reserved just being an introvert everything you have not given me i drop it here before i go and it will not be in your life again but he has given us the spirit of power and the spirit of love and the spirit of a sound mind the spirit of a sound mind you'll have that sound mind you'll have that boldness number one you'll have the boldness of faith the boldness of faith number two you'll have boldness without fear of fainting without fear of fainting number three you'll have fear, a boldness in the fairy forties shadrach meshach and abednego they told Nebuchadnezzar they were bold in their Lord. And even though the fairy furnace was being prepared for them, boldness in the fairy furnace. Number four, boldness among friends or foes. Not rudeness. You are not going to be rude to your friends. You are not going to be rude to your foes, even to your enemies. But you will be bold. You are not going to be aggressive. And you are not going to be impolite. But you are going to be bold. The boldness we are talking about, it's in your heart. That you are not afraid they cannot hurt me they are my friends 
they cannot hurt me even if they are my foes because when a man's ways please the lord he will even make his enemies to be at peace with him god has sent me here to do the work of god and those enemies is just because they don't understand me forgive them lord they don't know what they do they don't understand this is my ministry and they don't understand god has sent me here they don't understand that this is exactly the way god wants me to act at this time and they think they know better than i know that's why they're doing what they're doing you know lord forgive them but i'm not going to be afraid of them you will not be afraid of them boldness among friends or foes number five boldness in the flock boldness in the flock you come to your congregation and when you come to your congregation you look at your people you love them and they love you you know sometimes we think that uh, they don't uh, they don't love us because uh, they do some things that you know, maybe we don't appreciate uh, don't you know sometimes uh, there are children at least i have taught in the secondary school i taught in secondary school for many many years before i came to university and those uh, young people they just they, they just love me but you know sometimes in their love they will they will do something just to catch my attention it might be that they will you know quote a particular equation that are given to them or maybe they'll quote a particular theorem you know while i was passing by they'll shout it out and something for me to hear they just want to look that direction and if you didn't know why they were doing that you'll think oh they hate me they don't want me they don't want me to be their teacher but i knew that they wanted me to be their teacher because anytime i was absent i wasn't too much absent but anytime i was absent you know they will they will be saying where's that teacher where's that teacher and when i get to the class you know sometimes they made noise if they made noise it was a noise of joy and it was just to show me that you know we're still alive and we're still active you know sometimes when some things happen in your congregation if you have the wrong interpretation is that they don't like me they don't love me send me another place this is not a good flock that's the best flock the lord has given you and you are going to enjoy them in jesus name boldness in the flock and then number six boldness with faithfulness god will make you faithful i come to point number three breakthrough of guided ministers you see when the lord guides you you are going to have a breakthrough and if the lord as you know as the lord is guiding you, you follow the lord and as you are following the lord you'll find how the lord himself will make you successful acts of the apostles chapter 16 acts of the apostles chapter 16 from acts of the apostles chapter 16 we're looking at verse 6 acts chapter 16 reading from verse 6 the lord guides you by spirit and that guidance of the lord will lead you to victory will lead you to a breakthrough and to the blessing in ministry in acts of the apostles chapter 16 verse 6 now when they had gone through out phrygia and the region of galatia and were forbidding of the holy ghost to preach the word in asia they were, that means they wanted to go uh, to uh, that to asia immediately and the lord said no i'm guiding you that's not the place to go now and then it says in verse 7 after they were come to Mysia, they are said they tried to go into bithynia but the spirit suffered them not the spirit will not permit them that's this not the time now and they passing by Mysia came to troas and a vision appeared to paul in the night and there stood a man of macedonia and prayed him and pleaded both him and beseeched him saying come over into macedonia and help us you see they got it in verse 10 it says and after he had seen the vision immediately we endeavor to go into macedonia assuredly gathering that the lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them and uh, so they knew that this was the guidance of the lord but do you know that in the dream in the revelation rather in the vision they saw a man a man of macedonia verse 9 preach us saying come over and help us look at verse 14 and a certain woman if you if you don't understand you are going to you, you are going to misinterpret everything because in my vision i saw a man and it was a man of macedonia and now getting to this place the area of macedonia who do i see a certain woman named lydia a seller of purple of the of the city of tatira which worshiped god had us whose heart the lord opened and she had and she attended unto the things which were spoken of paul and when she was baptized and her household she besought us saying if ye have judged me to be faithful 
to the to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And uh, so you see that when they got there, they saw a woman. If uh, you didn't understand the interpretation of the vision, you'll still be waiting. That's not it. It was a man that we saw in the vision. And this is a woman. Look at the next thing here in verse 16. And it came to pass as we went, a certain damsel. That's a lady again. A lady showed up. And the ministry, instead of being involved with men, 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 just women coming up at the beginning. And then it says, It was possessed with the spirit of divination in she met us, which brought her masters much gain by so saying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this she did many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said unto the Spirit, not unto her, we're not fighting flesh and blood, unto the Spirit, we're not fighting the women, we're not fighting the children either. And we're not fighting the youth. And we're not fighting the language section in the church. And we're not fighting the men either. And we're not fighting our colleagues, our region overseers like ourselves. And we're not fighting the state overseers that God has placed over us. Neither are we fighting any of the other people, whether it's the choir or the ushers or anybody. We're not fighting our brethren. We're not fighting the people of God. Said unto the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And and, she, and he came out the same hour i want you to understand she that was the the woman the lady but when he said to come out of her it was a he masculine that came out and you see if you are not understanding if you don't understand things you'll be mixing up everything where where it ought to be the she you'll think it's a he and why it ought to be he you think is she and eventually the victory came but you see they threw them into the prison but don't let that surprise you because this is a paradox of the spiritual breakthrough of the supernatural breakthrough the way up is down the way out is in and the way to the greatest height is the, the way to the greatest height is the depth of humility the way up is now verse 25 at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god and the prisoners had them as a result of the miracle that happened they threw them in jail they threw them in the prison and suddenly there there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose and the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep seeing the prison doors open he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had fled and paul cried with a loud voice saying thou do thyself no harm for we are all here then he called for them he this is a man now what did he see? Who did he see when the Lord appeared to him and he said, come over to Macedonia? He saw a man. And when he got into Macedonia, it wasn't a man that he first ministered to. Woman. And then the one that uh, made the uh, people to understand that this is a great power of God was a damsel, a woman. And now they got into the prison and now the man that the lord uh, had showed him come over to macedonia and help us one of the men now showed up and he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before paul and silas and besought them and he brought them out and said sirs what must i do to be saved and they said believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house eventually he was saved and his house the Lord is going to give us breakthrough. I said the Lord is going to give us breakthrough. As the Lord leads us, and as he guides us, by the scripture and by the spirit. And then we follow the leading of the Lord in the scriptures and the leading of the Lord in the spirit. We're going to have success in ministry. And we're going to have the breakthrough in ministry and in life and our families that we ought to have in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and stand upon the promises of God, knowing the victory has come. We're going out of this place with the confidence of the Lord. With faith in our heart. You are what God says you are. You can do what God says you can do. You have what God says you have. He says you have power. I believe you have the power. He says he has called you. I believe he has called you. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. The word of God will never leave your mouth. The promise of God will never leave your mouth. Don't allow what people say about you. What people think about you. What gossip is flying around about you. To disturb your mind. You know who you are. 
you know what God has called you to do and you know what is the truth about it and just forgive them forgive them Lord they don't know what they are saying they don't know what they are doing give yourself to the Lord you know you are sincere you know you are serving the Lord you know you don't have any ulterior motive you know you are not seeking position you know that you are not a bad person you know you are a child of God and you know you are sanctified and you know you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you know that what you are doing that's what the Lord told you to do they may misunderstand you they may misrepresent you they may misquote you just go on doing what the Lord has called you to do and if you will do that and you don't meditate on what they say on what they think on what they do and you are meditating on the word of god you will succeed success is before you prosperity is before you victory is before you triumph you are more than a conqueror more than a conqueror more than a conqueror the lord has called you you will not fail you will not fall the devil will not defeat you nobody will run you out of the ministry your hand has started and your hand will finish it all know who you are know what god has called you to do do it without looking back in jesus name we pray tomorrow we'll be leaving this place and we're marching onto victory why don't you raise up your hand as we pray victory victory is before you success before you success in ministry that concerning your in your family my dear sister there the lord has taken care of it wipe your tears away there's no reason for you to cry anymore when you get back home you will see the result the lord has taken care of it father in the name of jesus we thank you because we know you have called us we know you have commissioned us your hand is upon your people and your word is in their mouth your word is in their mind your word is in their heart your word is in their spirit and lord with the strength of the lord we are marching on to victory as we go back into the field lord we know iron doors will open before your people in jesus name and Lord, where they have failed before now, they will succeed. Where they were defeated before now, we know they will conquer. Oh Lord, we are praying that this year will be a year of breakthrough. A year of blessing. Happiness and joy. Happiness and joy in the life. Happiness and joy in the family. Happiness and joy in the ministry. Where they have been managing, tolerating the ministry, they will enjoy the ministry they will enjoy the church and lord i pray your hand that is upon them now will never leave them and as you have said you will not forsake you will not leave oh lord i pray you will not forsake your people in jesus name in the day and in the night you will be with your people you have told us you have told everyone that we can do what you call us to do we are what you say we are and therefore lord i pray the great one will live big in every one of us in jesus name when they speak the word of salvation sinners will be saved when they speak the word of authority against sickness the sick people are going to be healed and when they open their mouths and they declare the word of the lord in authority against evil spirits evil spirits will be cast out in jesus name lord when they sing when they preach when they pray when they do whatever you call them to do i pray they will back up their ministry in jesus name speaking to the children or speaking to the youth or speaking to the adults or speaking in the, in the women ministry or speaking to the language people oh lord your word will be effective in every mouth of every minister in jesus name victory has come for everyone and power has come for everyone authority has come for everyone lord make your people bold and strong in the inner man they will not be crushed anymore they will not be discouraged anymore i pray oh lord that every time the lord will be mighty in their inner man and lord when they stand they stand in the boldness and confidence of the lord and anytime temptation is coming to be weak temptation is coming to be to faint oh lord i pray you remind them once again and then you inject them once again with divine energy that they get up and they keep on running and they keep on walking and they keep on preaching and they keep on singing and they keep on doing the word the work you have given them to do and then when the trumpet shall sound lord all of us without exception 
will be with you up on high in Jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray